a terrifying public execution in the parking lot of a busy public hospital. 19-year-old Melvin Vernell III, a.k.a. Lil Fat, was killed in a shooting outside a hospital in Atlanta. Police Captain Steve Rose confirmed that he was shot several times on the parking deck near the entrance of Northside Hospital Women's Center Wednesday and was pronounced later that night. I didn't know what to think what happened. It was just like I've never felt something that bad that happened to me ever. One joyful day in 2012, Martin Vernell III, better known for his hip-hop moniker, Lil Fat, anxiously awaited the birth of his third daughter. Tragically, he never got to meet her. For that same evening, Lil Fat was tracked, hunted down, and assassinated in cold blood. It was Thursday, June 7, 2012, and Lil Fat spent the first part of his day with the realtor checking out different houses in Atlanta in anticipation of the birth of his baby girl. A few hours later, he stopped for lunch at Popeye's before making his way to Northside Hospital in Sandy Springs, Georgia, to see his fiancée, Alnisi Frazier, who was on bed rest in the delivery wing. Although she was only seven and a half months pregnant, she was very close to going into labor, and Lil Fat spent some time with her to make sure she was doing okay. Shortly after, Lil Fat told Alnisi that he was going to go work on some records, and he went downstairs and exited into the parking deck, where he got into his white Audi A7. A few minutes later, at 6.40 p.m., Sandy Springs Police Department received several calls stating that a man had been shot in the parking lot, and they immediately dispatched units to the scene. As soon as they arrived, they discovered Lil Fat's white Audi in the parking lot with six bullet holes through the back window. Lil Fat was no longer there, by that time, Northside Hospital staff had removed him from his car, taking him into the emergency room to try to save his life, but it was too late. 19-year-old Lil Fat was pronounced deceased in the emergency room after being shot in the back four times. Sadly, police had to break the horrifying news of the hit to Alnisi Frazier, who was about to give birth to their daughter. The entire hip-hop community was devastated following the incident. Lil Fat was one of Atlanta's most prominent up-and-coming young rappers, and it was incredibly tragic that his life ended so abruptly before the world could hear the best of his music. At 19, he had already collaborated with some big names in the industry, including Lil Boosie, Mouse on the Track, Kevin Gates, and DJ Khaled. As the city mourned the passing of Lil Fat, police launched an investigation to find his assailant. Back at the scene, Investigators found shell casings in the parking lot, and inside Lil Fat's blood-drenched car, a handgun that had not been fired was discovered. Thanks to the shell casings, police quickly determined that the weapon was a Glock 357 SIG. Several witnesses had also described seeing two black males walking in the parking lot shortly before the ambush, which helped investigators begin the search. In order to have more information on the circumstances surrounding the hit, the FBI searched Lil Fat's home and found that it had been ransacked. Given the disorganized state of the house, it was obvious that whoever had broken in had been looking for something. A strong smell of dope suggested there may have been illegal substances at the house, but police hadn't found a connection between the break-in and the hit. As Lil Fat's body was transported to his birthplace in Baton Rouge to be buried, police zeroed in on their first suspect, and it was no other than Torrance Ivy Hatch Jr., better known as Boozy Badass who at the time was serving an eight-year sentence at the Louisiana State Penitentiary over previous gun and drug-related charges. Little Boozy had been convicted of gun and and had an eight-year sentence to serve, so he was in Angola State Prison. Allegedly, Boozy had been involved in a money-related disagreement with Lil Fat in the weeks leading up to his assassination, which made him a potential suspect. But when the FBI looked at Boozy's prison phone records, they found a call that had taken place on the morning after the hit between Boozy and a young woman, in which the woman delivered the news of Lil Fat's passing. During the call, Boozy sounded devastated and even screamed in frustration and agony after receiving the tragic news of the loss of his friend. After listening to the other phone calls, the FBI ruled out that Boozy had anything to do with the hit of Lil Fat. Just as the case began to dry up, a confidential informant called the FBI and provided information to help tie the break-in 
to the hit of Zofat. The informant named two seemingly unrelated suspects in the hit, Gary Eldorado Red Bradford and the sensei Grizz White. Eldorado Red had a criminal background and an important position in the Bang Get Money gang in Montgomery, Alabama. Grizz, on the other hand, was a college basketball player at San Francisco State University. Police initially struggled to find a connection between the two suspects, but they quickly found out that Grizz was one of Eldorado Red's largest dope suppliers, and the two had made millions of dollars together. Although their phone records show that they were both at the hospital a couple hours before the hit, their motives for wanting Lil Fat to cease was still unclear. Two weeks after the assassination, a 911 dispatcher received an anonymous tip from a man claiming that he knew of another person who was involved in the hit, Maurice the Boy Connor, another member of the Bang Get Money gang who worked under Eldorado Red. Records show that Connor had gotten a speeding ticket on the day before the murder as he was crossing the border from Alabama to Georgia. The officer who pulled them over mentioned that there was another passenger in the car, a man by the name of DeAndre Washington. Chillingly, when the officer asked them where they were going, Connor responded that they were going to a funeral in Atlanta. Investigators soon found that 38 seconds after the hit, Connor had made a phone call in the hospital, which placed him and Washington at the scene of the crime. But even if Connor and Washington had somehow been involved in the execution, police still didn't know how they could have known that Lil Fat would be at Northside Hospital that afternoon. After that time, another tipster came forward with information claiming that Eldorado Red had recruited Maurice Connor and DeAndre Washington to kill Lil Fat for $10,000 and that Washington had been the one to pull the trigger. At first, police didn't know whether to believe him, but when the tipster mentioned that the weapon used was a Glock 357 SIG, which is information they hadn't released yet, they knew he was a reliable source. The informant also mentioned that Fat's car had a GPS locator in it and that a Russian man who had rented the car to Lil Fat helped the killers track him down. This is when the case took yet another surprising turn. Investigators found that the Audi A7 Fat was driving on the day of the execution belonged to a truck driver in Covington, Georgia. Police interrogated him, and the truck driver said that after buying the vehicle, he sent it to Global Elite, a luxury car rental business, where it would be paid off in a year's time. Manny Chilpayev, the business owner, rented luxury cars to famous artists, sports figures, and some notorious dealers. Over an 18-month period, he had rented six cars to Lil Fat. Investigators were shocked to find out that Chilpayev was the confidential informant who gave the FBI the name of the Sensei White in Eldorado Red. Years before the execution, Chapayev had become involved with the FBI when he was convicted for his involvement with the Russian mob. In return for his freedom, the FBI offered him the opportunity to become an informant and rat out criminals in his orbit, many of which were his clients. After the GPS tracker were retrieved from Lil Fat's car, the records show that on the day of his execution, he had been hunted down like a dog, with his assailants tracking his whereabouts every 20 minutes. At this point in the case, police had information on multiple suspects. But why and how had Chopayev helped Lil Fat's assailants track him down? What was his motive? And why did Grizz and Eldorado Red want Lil Fat's life in the first place? As they wrestled with these questions, detectives learned that six days before the hit, Lil Fat had robbed one of Grizz's and Eldorado Red's dope couriers at gunpoint and took off in a black Cadillac with 10 pounds of stolen dope, which put a massive target on Lil Fat's back. After digging into Manny Chopayev's abundant criminal history, investigators learned that he had just gotten off federal probation for renting stolen vehicles to his clients. They also found out that Lil Fat had recently been caught speeding, and because the car he was driving was stolen, he went to jail. If Lil Fat would have mentioned that the vehicle was rented, his testimony would incriminate Chopayev, which would have landed him in prison for a long, long time. In light of this, police now had a motive for why Chopayev would want to help Lil Fat's assailants track him down. Shockingly, later on in the case, it was found that Chopayev's contact with the FBI, an agent by the name of Dante Jackson, had been receiving expensive gifts from Chopayev, including watches, VIP entrances to nightclubs, and the best tickets to see the Miami Heat. In return, he obstructed the investigation and helped take the spotlight off Chopayev. Who was Chopayev's handler, Dante Jackson, 
now under investigation by the FBI itself, after allegations he obstructed the murder case while receiving extravagant gifts from his informant. Two months after the shooting, investigators arrested Chopayev, but it wasn't until August of 2014, two years after the conviction, that trials began for three of the five suspects. Because of his full cooperation in the case, Grez was only sentenced to eight years probation. DeAndre Washington was sentenced to life without parole. Maurice Connor was sentenced to 30 years for conspiracy to commit the hit. And Bradford was sentenced to 25 years in prison, but he was released early in 2017 after serving just two years of his sentence. One of the most controversial outcomes of this case was that all charges against Chopayev were eventually dropped on a legal technicality. Because he was an informant, the court decided that his communication with the FBI could not be used as evidence against him and he was able to walk away with no charges. Shortly after, Lil Fat's fiancé sued the local government, claiming that the FBI's confidential informant, Manny Chopayev, was in on the killing and should be held responsible for his actions. But the court decided that the FBI had not played a role in the execution of her fiancé. New at four, a federal judge says the FBI had no role in the death of an Atlanta rapper. The victim's girlfriend had sued the government on grounds and the FBI informant was in on the with the turbulent case that followed his execution, only one thing is certain. Lil Fat was taken way too soon. Known for his flow and smooth lyrical style, which he had been developing since he started rapping professionally at just 14 years old, Lil Fat lived on through his music, much of which helped skyrocket the success of his father's label, Trill Entertainment. He will forever be remembered by his fans for his epic mixtapes and collaborations with some of the biggest names in the industry. Lil Fat left behind six siblings, three young daughters, his fiance, his parents, and hundreds of thousands of adoring fans who are keeping his legacy alive. Although the people responsible for his passing are now behind bars, nothing will ever fill the hole that Lil Fat left in the Atlanta hip-hop community. Rest in peace, Lil Fat.